Last month, I made a video about increasingly bonkers author Naomi Wolf hosting an anti-vaccine potluck after being banned from Twitter. Well, I have a few important updates to that video. First of all, the Juneteenth potluck and rally was sadly canceled due to a scheduling conflict. They didn't provide more details, so I just assume Wolf got a better offer to host an anti-time travel rally in a local San Francisco dog park. But wait, that's not all I have to update you on. Uh, in the same video, I discuss an interesting new study on vaccine hesitancy that found that in a survey, people were less likely to say that they would want to get a COVID-19 vaccine if that vaccine were mandated by the government driven in part by a deep distrust of the government. The researchers suggested that this is also due to a mandate crowding out feelings of social responsibility that would contribute to people feeling better about getting the vaccine and making a more cohesive society. They thought that the results would be equally bad whether you examine the carrot or the stick. So the stick being mandates that punish you for not getting a vaccine and the carrot being economic or other rewards given to people for getting the vaccine. I was a bit skeptical of that uh, and I said this. But here's the rub. We already know that incentives work. Several U.S. states, including my own, have started doing vaccine lotteries where they give millions of dollars in cash and prizes out to people who get vaccinated. The trend started in Ohio where they started handing out a million dollars every week and they immediately saw the number of appointments for vaccinations jump 73%. And I could be wrong here, but I don't think Ohio has seen an equal and opposite drop in social cohesion. So personally, I don't really buy the argument, the, the crowding out argument that a lack of intrinsic decision making is the problem. But I do buy the argument that for a certain subset of people, most of whom exist on a spectrum uh, located very nearby to paranoid anti-government kook balls, a government mandate does run the risk of further radicalizing them and pushing them into their extremist echo chamber. Well, it turns out that those early reports of the lottery increasing the number of vaccinations may have been wrong. This week, doctors at Boston University published a letter in JAMA that found that Ohio's lottery did not significantly increase vaccine uptake. There was, as reported at the time, a big jump, like 50 to 100% jump in vaccinations the week following the lottery announcement. But the researchers wondered if maybe that was due to something other than the lottery. So they compared Ohio's increase to other states that did not have lotteries. And they saw that the change in vaccination numbers was pretty similar whether you were in or out of Ohio. So why did a bunch more people suddenly and coincidentally want vaccines around the same time that Ohio launched their lottery? Well, the researchers point out that about that same time, the FDA expanded emergency use authorization for the Pfizer vaccine to allow it to be given to adolescents aged 12 to 15. This not only increases the total number of vaccines being given, but it also may have encouraged parents and other adults to get vaccinated who weren't previously going to bother. So does this mean that vaccine lotteries are a waste of time and money? Maybe, maybe not. The study authors point out that they might not have quite enough data to detect small bumps that the lottery may have encouraged. But it is a pretty compelling argument that the money spent on these lotteries might be better spent on different efforts to reach out to people who might not be vaccinated yet. And who are these people who aren't vaccinated yet? Well, like I mentioned in that previous video, there are a lot of people who distrust the government and or the healthcare industry. Reaching them is going to be particularly tricky because... Well, the American government hasn't been particularly trustworthy of late. I mean, like for the last five years. Um, and the American healthcare industry is just straight up garbage and pretty much always has been. The good news here is that surveys show that these people tend to be split into two camps. People who say they definitely will not get a vaccine and those who say they will wait and see if the vaccines work before they join in. 
Both groups distrust the government and doctors, but one group uh, we might be able to reach. The definitely not group is mostly white conservatives, while the wait and see group is much more likely to be black and Hispanic. And those are the people we have a good chance to reach, especially once vaccines get full FDA approval. Unfortunately, access to vaccines is still not perfect, especially not for that very group of Black and Hispanic people. Yes, the U.S. has way more vaccines now than we even need, and it's easy now for someone like me to get vaccinated. I have a car, I work from home, I can afford to take a day or two off to get the shot and then lay low for any potential side effects. But that's not the case for many Americans. Getting to a pharmacy isn't easy when you have to rely on public transportation that has been severely limited during the pandemic. Getting time off from an hourly minimum wage job where you're considered essential is tough. And taking sick days is even tougher. Uh, Kaiser Permanente found in a survey that people are more likely to want to get a vaccine when their employer actively encourages it and when their employer provides time off to get it. They also found that more people, especially Black and Hispanic, were willing to get vaccinated at a mobile clinic that comes to their neighborhood. All of this data taken together fits into what I've been preaching for more than a decade now. Society is better, more educated, healthier, and less superstitious when their basic needs are provided for, when they have stability, which is why if we had basic universal health care, reliable public transportation, and social safety nets, people would be more likely to trust their government, trust scientists, and also care about their neighbors. So they would be more likely and more able to do things like get vaccinated for the greater good. And so now I've edited my previous opinion of that previous study's conclusions. Maybe it is true that neither the carrot nor the stick will fix the problem of low vaccination rates. While I can't say whether or not their crowding out hypothesis is correct, I think I can agree that both the carrot and stick options are too little too late, and that true beneficial change has to happen on a systemic level by satisfying people's basic needs before we can expect them to be good, educated, upstanding citizens.